That's right. So second map is in Toon Valley. And we'll see how this game continues. Will Sake be able to draw it up? Starting to the bottom left, we have his opponent. Starting for Incredible Miracle, the player with the 1-0 lead in this best of five. It is first. <laughs> and starting to the top right of Entombed Valley, cross-positioned in red, the German player. Give it up for soccer. <laughs> Last European here in this tournament. Yeah, that's right. Three other Koreans, no Americans. Just to clarify that, of course, if you're just watching this, this is the first semi-final of the Intel Extreme Masters here in Poland, in Katowice, and both players a minimum of $1,700 banked. And it will only increase if they can move on to the Grand Finals. Do you want to try it again? <laughs> Jared can probably help you with the pronunciation. Well, PvP, and uh, currently we are you were talking a little bit about soccer earlier, about his accomplishments, about his last year, and talking about what first has achieved so far in soccer 2. We had him with a second place at MLG Summer Championship in 2012, and also a third place at 2012 MLG Summer Arena. So a player that has been overseas that's not only limited to Korea, he has played a lot of just PvPs in general, of course, and the, really the one thing that astounds me when I look at his statistics is that he has a 71% win ratio against Protoss, which is crazy. Sokka himself with a really good record, especially lately he was able to win against most Protoss opponents, but first it just seems to be on a completely different level. Yeah, I remember a couple of seasons ago in Code A, first he managed to beat Hero 2-0. Um, Liquid Hero, that is. So he's very, very competent in this matchup. Unfortunately for him, though, he doesn't know that it's cross position only. Sake does as he scouts cross position and first does go to the top left. But Sake gets in there, sees double gas. Both of them are going Zealot Sentry. Stargate is very possible at this point. As we're about to find out if that's going to happen. Stargate is a very strong build here. And you know, talking about the Stargate, you mentioned the series between Hero and First, and one of the things that First did was start with the 4-gate robotics to go for the War Prism, and Hero starting with the Stargate did not see it coming. Soccer this time is going for the Stargate, but we don't see this proxy build that First used against his Korean opponent back in Code A. So right now he's going for an expansion here. Oh, I really like this for Sake, actually. Yeah. Um, so one gateway, uh, double gas into an expansion from first. What Sake is going to do now is, depending on how he plays this out, he obviously needs to get down these extra gateways in case of any pressure. But does he throw down a fourth gateway now? Uh, in total for four gateways, that is. Does he throw down a robo to be safe to start a mortal production after, uh, after expanding? And depending on what he chooses, because there's a lot of variation when it comes to Stargate play. And what we're going to see from first is the Robo, but he's going to throw down two more gateways in a minute. I really like this for Sake, yeah. because it, either way, if he goes for a bust, or if he plays this economically, which I think he will with the Nexus going down shortly, this is really good for him. It definitely is. And of course, one of the keys here is that first was not able to get in with the second probe. He has no clue what's going on here. The only thing that he saw is that at this point, Sokka didn't have his own expansion up. Here comes the pile and Sokka seems to be eager to go for the aggression. And with those Phoenixes, he can do a lot. If he moves in and picks up the sentries of his opponent, kills them with the Phoenixes, hides them for a long time, then he can just move up the ramp and end this game. He might go for exactly this push, now moving out yeah. with two of those Phoenixes, whereas we see a lot of other Stargate players showing the first Phoenix right away. Yeah, I think he's going to try and bust this actually here, Kaldor. Of course, there's always there was a couple of options for him. Yeah, he's going to try it. He's uh, warping in additional units. Look at that great scout, though. By first seen units out in the middle. But there is just a handful of units here for yeah. first. And Sokka now he doesn't want to pick up probes, though. Does not want to pick up probes. He has to focus on the sentries to make sure that the force tools don't cut him off. Because if force tools come down, Sokka is not going anywhere. Exactly. As I mentioned earlier, if he now takes down those sentries, then he's in a good spot. The first immortal will be out. That's definitely the case here. But we have a lot of zealots here. Very zealot heavy for Zokka. Six in total, four phoenixes. He can go in and take down these sentries. He moves in another round of 
units and here comes Sokka, 54 supply against 51, the sentry's trying to get into a position, here comes the Guardian Shield and Sokka moves in, picking up oh. those sentries, trying to take them down, but nice focusing by first. Wow, great force as soon as the finishes come in, first threw down the force before the sentries actually got picked up there, that was amazing and Sokka had to cancel the liftoffs yeah. because he just loses phoenixes there. Exactly, he lost the first one already and the second one was also danger, here we go again, another lift and bam, the phoenix goes down but suddenly Sokka is up the ref, another set of force skills, the sentries of first are trapped. Oh, great force skills by Sokka, but even better ones from first as the Phoenix is land down. He traps his own immortal to make sure that the Zealots can't touch it. Great micro there. I'm not sure if Sokka is going to be able to break this. Sokka is trying though, but there are so many Stalkers for his opponent. Six Stalkers, eight Stalkers with the newly warped in units, and this is just too much for Sokka to handle. First moves in, takes down sentry after sentry, the Phoenixes, they die as well, and Sokka is in so much trouble now. First is up to 50 supply against 30. He has way more harvesters and most yeah. of all he has an expansion. Shoke, uh, Shoke? Sokke is shaking his head and he knows that that didn't work. GG. GG. goes up 2-0 here very, very quickly. First with the expansion, uh, Sokka going into the Stargate, trying to break through, but the Stalkers that first warps in right away as he sees what's, what's happening here, they are enough to make sure that those sentries are still surviving, the force fields are good, and then we have the Immortal as well, a lot of Stalkers that Sokka just could not kill. Yeah, really unfortunate, but fantastic preemptive force fields there. As soon as the Phoenix has come in, poof, force fields are already down. That was what was able to save him there. That was absolutely amazing. Amazing. Yeah, that was really, really well done. And of course, also the force fields that we just saw from first, cutting those zealots off. This was really difficult for the German player to handle. And first, his micro was just simply too good. First is absolutely dominating this tournament, Kaldor. He's already 5-0 in Group D, or was 5-0, dropped a single map. He then went on over to the quarterfinals and smashed TLO 3-0 very, very convincingly, and is now winning 2-0 yep. here. Uh, with the record he's going, if he keeps going this way, he could very well go to the finals and give Parting, if Parting's able to beat Dream in the second semi-final, a run for his money. And he's looking strong in the Protoss Mirror match. He already won the first two games. The next map is going to be Ohana. So we will see another very tense fight on this map with the PvP. And Sokka, well, what is he going to do now? He has to find a strategy. But before we are heading into game number three, we're giving it back to the analysis desk. And let's see what those guys have to say about the last match in a Tomb Valley and Sokka's strategy. First with a great hold. Where does Sokka go from here down 0-2? Um, <laughs> everything he seems to try fails. I mean, the first game does not really count because, like I said, it was a very unorthodox uh, proxy, not the usual one, and um, I, it wasn't. It didn't feel like a, one of those real games. But this time, soccer going for one of the standard all-ins, the execution was not as good. I feel like he made two two probes too many, and he should have gone for the fourth gate. And also, I can tell. He does not make this all in very often because just of the way he was too passive and he waited too much. Uh, he definitely should have attacked earlier, earlier, in my opinion. Yeah. What about when he first showed those phoenixes? When when those phoenixes were shown, was that really the time he was also supposed to be attacking? Yes. Just uh, with two or three, basically. Yes. When you have two, you should already poke in. Try to snipe sentries. If you see sentries again, it means there is a sentry expand. And yep. uh, first, the build he made is actually a build that I do a lot of the time, except his is so much more refined than mine. He has everything earlier. So we see here, first, he just saw those phoenixes fly by. And he already has three sentries charging up on energies from the start of the game. Yep. He did not make four. Four is a bit of an overcommitment. Uh, he's basically wasting gas. And behind this, he goes for the very quick immortal. He could have boosted this one at least twice already. And uh, his third gate is on the way. Now he saw the phoenixes. He should know. There is a big attack coming, most likely, especially since Shocker did not start lifting probe and killing them. So first now, he only has to warp units, and if Sokka tries to enter here, he needs to triple force field and buy himself more time for more warps. But Sokka is going to go for the very zealot heavy attack here. And uh, first, his defense was just beautiful. We can look with his view, what he sees. He's just waiting for Sokka to come here. He even had his observer uh, in position to see those units coming. And guys, if you want a solid build for Ohana or Entombed Valley, this is it. 
go on the Ex Intel Extreme Masters website, download this replay, and try it, and you will see you will have great results because this is seriously such a good build. Not much can break this. There is very little builds that can actually beat this one on those maps. I really like what you said where as the Phoenixes were coming in, he already threw those, those force fields yes. down. And that made it so we see in this battle, he pulls up all the, all the sentries and allows his army to get in. If he had been able yeah. to do that a little earlier, that would have been pretty significant. And you know, he went very stalker heavy because he wanted to cover his sentries. But sadly for him, the first Phoenix that he killed dropped a sentry that had no energy left to force field here again. Mm -hmm. So that was a bit unfortunate. I feel like as soon as he saw those Phoenixes, he should have made the force fields faster, and then it would have been even better. But still, having so many Stalkers, he's going to be able to kite non-stop here, and those Zealots and Sentries are not going to do enough. First, holding again against Sokke. I really don't know how Sokke can, can beat this guy. Yeah. First, with a very strong execution of his strategies, he knows the counterplay, he knows what he's weak to, he knows how to avoid that, and just come out ahead over and over. Yeah, well, these were the two top players in the entire group stage, and I was really eager to see this PvP, but I think it's clear that first is oh, a solid understanding of the matchup, really solid builds. The next map is Ohana. What do you think Ohana? we can see? Ohana. Sok is definitely not out. I think one thing that's very important to note, even though he is down 0-2, he has really only lost one real game. Yeah, there, and Go ahead. He lost only one real game, but... It's still 0-2, so he, like now there's no room for mistakes anymore for Sokka. Yep. And like I said, the build that first did in the last game, he's very good on Ohana as well, just because the overlay of the map is around the expansion. is, I guess you can say similar in a way uh, with Ohana, in the way that blink stalkers cannot really blink in, in and out of the base too easily, and then you have the second ramp as well. And it's even better on one, actually, because you, you need only to force it as your, exp as your expansion. So first, he has a choice here. He can go for the same build, or since he's already up two games, he can try to mix it up a little bit and have some fun with the Phoenix build as well. On Ohana, I feel like even Blink Stalkers can be good, because you have a lot of space around the bases to maneuver with probes and make proxy pylons in like secret locations. And then there is also a couple of all-ins that can be very good, like a proxy robo and stuff like that. So this is really one of the maps where you can do the most builds. Just in general, I feel like Blink Stalkers are weaker on this map, especially if you play against a very solid player. So I, I doubt that any, any of them will go for Blink here. But we might see anything else. Masake just looked through his stack of papers, all his notes, his builds, and he threw all of them to the ground except one. So this is it. This is his best one. He's busting it out. And we'll see if it's enough. The players are ready. The casters are ready. I'm ready. Let's get in the game.